Yeah, I think there's no question that the Iranians uh, have now responded. The uh, uh, Iranian regime has, in fact, through its uh, media outlets, uh, uh, announced formally that it has begun attacks, it claims, on several uh, um, uh, air bases here in Iraq where U.S. troops are based. The Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We've just had very important events taking place in the world and in the world of Islam. And there are numerous requests for me to comment on the, on the assassination by the United States, ordered by President Donald Trump of the United States, of that top general of the Iranian Armed Forces, uh, General Qasim Soleimani. And with him, there were others who were, who were assassinated, uh, uh, droned in the sky, mm -hmm. and the rockets are sent from the drone, and there's pinpoint accuracy. That's why they have the satellites, and they're photographing every single square inch of the Earth, which is why we have GPS, because they have every single building already photographed on the face of the Earth. <coughs> So they can send, they have the coordinates, and they can send the rockets with pinpoint accuracy. So they assassinated um, the general. It was an act of war, an American act of war. Did the president of the United States have the authority to commit an act of war on another country without the permission of the US Congress? That's for the Americans to decide. The law. The law and the Constitution in the United States does not give the American president the authority to commit an act of war, which is to declare war, without the approval of Congress. But this is what he did. And now I understand they're clipping his wings. But they committed an act of war on the territory of Iraq in assassinating this general. And in so doing, uh, they, they forced upon both Iran and Iraq, uh, in, as any self-respecting -respect people would have to respond to this act of war. And both Iran and Iraq responded swiftly. The Iraqi response was very humiliating for the United States and for Mr. Trump. And that is that the Iraqi parliament voted to expel American troops from Iraq. This was something that was very humiliating, public humiliation for the American president and for the image of the United States in the world, that the Iraqi parliament had voted unanimously to expel. expel. I'm not concerned with who are those who did not attend the session and did not vote. Once the parliament has voted to expel, it's legally done, it's still a massive blow, a humiliating blow to the United States. And I have commented that President Putin of Russia would never have made such a mistake, committed such a blunder that will bring such humiliation upon him and upon Russia. This is the difference between the leadership of Russia today and the leadership of the West. Um, and not only has Iraq responded by demanding, by expelling, voting to expel American troops from Iraq, but the danger is the longer the United States seeks to delay leaving Iraq, the more the likelihood of further humiliation, because this is a matter outside outside of the authority of the government. It's the people who are responding now. And the people could take action on their own. And so there's greater and greater humiliation left coming to the United States if they continue to remain military, their military presence in Iraq. Iran also responded, and swiftly so. 
and uh, they vowed revenge. And uh, the revenge came with what they call a slap on the face. If a man, if a man assassinates your, your general and you slap him on the face, that's not considered to be a terrible response. No, that's a mild response, a slap on the face. In that Iran sent a number of missiles, shot, uh, sent a number of missiles to attack American bases in Iraq. And uh, the Iraqi government were informed about this, and the Iraqi government never protested or said, you violated our sovereignty of the sovereignty. Nothing of the sort. Nothing had came from Iraq. So Iraq was in agreement with the Iranian response. Um, and we are told <coughs> Iran informed the Iraqi government prior to the attack. And the Iraqi government must have informed the Americans. And so they took all necessary steps, and no one was even injured in the attack. But President Trump had 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 boasted and had threatened massive retaliation to 52 sides in Iran if you were to respond and attack us. And when Iraq, when Iran did attack and respond with this um, attack of missiles on the Iraqi, on the U.S. Uh, military bases, Trump put his tail between his legs and he says, okay, we, nobody was injured, so no big thing. <laughs> what a climb down. This is the folly of the American president opening his mouth bombastically and then having to do, he can do nothing about it. And so round one of this, uh, this, um, this is only round one of this response has led to, uh, alhamdulillah, that no war is taking place. We're all happy about that. Everybody is breathing a sigh of relief because if war had taken place, if the United States had dared to attack Iran again in response to the American missiles being, um, the, the Iranian missiles attacking the American bases. If the United States had then attacked Iran, Iran had promised that we would attack Israel. An attack on Israel would mean a massive big war in the Middle East. The Straits of Hormuz would have been closed immediately. No oil could come out of the, of the Straits of Hormuz, no. Uh, and uh, the price of oil would have shot up a few hundred dollars barrels, a, a few hundred dollars per barrel, per more, or even more. And the massive dislocation of the, of the economy around the world. And uh, this would have all been a detrimental thing for the whole world if war were to take place with Iran. So the Americans realized that, no, we can't take that chance. So they decided to save, to, to take the, the path of restraint. But I've written, and uh, Newsday has published my letters. I've said, no, this story is not over. It's not yet over. Uh, there's likely to be more uh, retaliation. And uh, uh, one of the things that Iran can do is to put pressure now. If the United States does leave Iraq, then to put pressure on Qatar. Uh, the United States has a big military base in Qatar. And Qatar, which is now an ally of Iran, Qatar has broken away from the rest of the Arabs. And uh, Qatar can tell the United States, we want you to leave. Mm -hmm. And uh, Qatar can then turn to Russia for protection, mm -hmm. the security alliance. And this will be even more humiliation for the United States, being driven out of the whole of the Arab world, piece by piece. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the time has now come after this uh, brazen U.S. attack on uh, General Soleimani and massacre and assassinating him in broad daylight, um, humiliating attack. It is time for Iran to now reconsider their position on nuclear weapons. We have argued, and the Iranians defer with us, we have argued that the Quran has commanded, commanded us. The command has come from Allah in the Quran. In Surah Al-Anfal, listen to what Allah has said, Ba'da'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim An Islamic view 
of the development and use of nuclear weapons. Allah says, <coughs> excuse me, وَاسْتَعِينُ لَهُمْ وَاسْتَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَتَعَتُمْ مِنْ كُوَّةٍ وَمِنْ رِبَاتِ الْخَيْرِ And build power, Allah says. Build power. Build it to the maximum extent that you could possibly build it. What kind of power is Allah speaking about? تُرْهِبُونَ بِهِ عَدُوَ اللَّهِ وَعَدُوَكُمْ Build that kind of power which can function as a deterrence to deter the enemies of Allah and your enemies. You cannot deter the enemy today with bows and arrows. You cannot deter the enemy with conventional weapons. Why don't you understand? If you want to deter the enemy, if you want deterrent power, you have to build power with the use of weapons of mass destruction. That is the command in the Quran. You are not going to threaten anyone to use such weapons, no. The first use of such weapons is clearly haram. But the development of such weapons to function as a Deterrent, that is not haram. And if you are attacked with nuclear weapons, with weapons of mass destruction, then the, the Quran has given us the law of kisas. Kisas is reciprocal punishment. So if you attack us with nuclear weapons, we have the right on the basis of al kisas to respond and retaliate with nuclear weapons. And so the Iranian argument, which has been used by the ulama in Iran and by the, the Rahbar himself, Ayatollah Khamenei, that Islam prohibits the development and use of nuclear weapons, is a, is a position that we challenge. And now we say to Iran, after this great humiliation, the assassination of uh, General Qasim Soleimani, that the time has come for Iran to reconsider its position and to do what Pakistan has done, and they cannot stop you. They cannot say, we have nuclear weapons, but you are not allowed to have it. Who are they? Are they the policemen of the world? They cannot stop you. They're already waging war on you. What more can they do? So Iran has now to consider, reconsider its position in the wake of this attack on General Soleimani and in the wake of crippling sanctions which have been imposed on Iran by, wickedly so, by the West, continuing sanctions and sanctions and sanctions, that it is time for Iran to do what Pakistan has done and to build and develop a nuclear deterrent. The next thing we have to think about now is the accuracy and the capability of the Iranian missiles which were launched from Iran into Iraq to attack the American military bases in Iraq. Uh, it is a military analyst who will have to conduct that analysis. I am not a military analyst. But if the conclusion is that, uh, yes, Iran did possess the coordinates, Iran therefore had the capacity of, 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 find, of finding out the getting photographs of the buildings and so on, and the coordinates, and to be able to launch missiles with an accuracy which is commendable. If Iran does have, has demonstrated to the world that missile capacity and capability today, and if that is further enhanced now after this round of with the United States, then uh, what will be the implication? for an Iran which now develops nuclear weapons and has the capacity to deliver those nuclear weapons with missiles. This is a very interesting subject, and I believe that one of the lasting repercussions from the assassination of General Qasim Soleimani 
would be pressured to being now brought up to bear upon the leadership of Iran to reconsider their position concerning the Quran and the development and use of nuclear weapons. Um, a very unfortunate, unfortunate event also occurred within hours of the Iranian response in sending missiles to attack American bases. And that is, uh, there was a, a mistake committed uh, when there was a, a fear that a, a missile was coming to attack the Tehran airport. And uh, they shot down what they thought was a missile coming. In fact, it was an aeroplane that was leaving, a Ukrainian aeroplane. And uh, Iran, of course, denied that they shot it down because the leadership of Iran had no knowledge that this mistake had taken place. Um, but as soon as the Iranian leadership got the information and confirmed that, yes, someone in Iran had shot down that plane, and then Iran immediately did the honorable thing, the truthful thing, the righteous thing, and they admitted and they spoke the truth, which is, un which is uncommon today in the Western world because they tell lies and they conceal the truth. Whereas Iran, from the time they, under they had the evidence that, yes, we shot down the plane, they, conf they confirmed, yes, we, are, we, we shot down the plane, we did it by mistake. And the Iranian president apologized to the Ukrainian president. And of course, Iran will have to pay compensation. But if Iran shut down that aeroplane by mistake, well, mistakes do happen in war. And this was war. This is something that is excusable. Iran has just a few hours ago fired off rockets at the American military base, bases in, United, in, in Iraq. And hence, there could be the understandable expectation that the United States would respond. And when they saw this, what they considered to be a missile coming to the American, Tehran airport, they said they had only 10, 10 seconds with which to decide. And they made the mistake on the side of precaution by shooting it down. So this is not terrible mistake, an inexcusable mistake. This is an understandable mistake. And these things happen in warfare. And Iran has done the right thing in apologizing, accepting responsibility, and apologizing. And you cannot use this now to destabilize Iran and try to get public protests and in Trump inciting people in, in Iran to go on the streets and to to topple the government, this is wickedness. This is total wickedness. Every government that has been at war, every state which has been at war has made mistakes in the past. And this is quite understandable when one is fighting a war. And Iran was at war with the United States because the United States has committed an act of war in killing the General Soleimani. They have not condemned it. These who are now condemning Iran for shooting down the airplane unintentionally. They have never condemned the United States for assassinating Soleimani. No. These are a wicked people, a wicked people, a corrupt people who have no moral values and who have no belief in a day of judgment or hereafter when they'll have to stand before Allah and be judged. It's an essentially godless world. They are a godless people, and they want to establish a regime of godlessness all over the world. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.